Hello and welcome to this week's tutorial. This is uh, week five. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at how to add labels and change uh, the material properties in SolidWorks. So as you can see here, we have uh, a, one of the parts that we made in the previous weeks, a, a mug. So first of all, what I'm going to show you is a little bit about how to how you can change each individual material by selecting the either the feature, the face, or the body. You know, uh, each one has its own unique properties. So let's have a look. So in order to do, you can do it two ways. You can open up the menu here and check out either the appearances or the decals. Now the scenes is something else you can do, but we're, we're not going to cover too much of that. We're just simply going to talk about uh, appearances to change the, the material properties and then Maybe we can talk about about the, the we'll switch over to the decals. So um, the way that it works is that you can actually go do it two ways. You can search here for a material. So you know you have several choices. So let's just pick something really quick, like a, a satin finished plastic. And below you have a, a set of choices of what. The different plastics look like now the colors are not important because we can always change the color uh, but let's just pick one so let's say that we pick this red satin and we're going to apply it to the mug now in this case depending on what you select that's just, that's going to be the application to um, and so the world gives us three choices we can apply it to the entire mug to the body meaning only the 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 the, uh, the center part, the feature meaning the center of it, or the face. So when you when you drag the the color, it gives you the three choices. So let's just uh, pick uh, the entire mug, just for argument's sake. And so now we see that the mug has changed color. But if we want to edit those colors, well, then we need to go back to over here to the property editor and then we're gonna pick here and we're gonna edit the appearance click on the right and so the in the edit the appearance you can see how we can actually now begin to change the color so we can pick something else and it changes what it looks like uh, but we can also go up down here and pick a different color um, there's also a couple of other th features here. You can actually select by actually from the color picker or uh, you can ch choose from the uh, RGB scale. Now, in the advanced tab, we have a few more other options. For example, not just the color, but also the finish, the surface finish. This has to do uh, things like the uh, the bump mapping and so we can change the type of mapping we have so we can use brushed uh, material uh, we can have something else like a dimpled and then the settings get changed depending on what you want now it, it's pretty obvious that what's happening here is that if the mug doesn't change or it doesn't seem to change on the surface because the mapping is being applied to the material but it only you can only see it if you render it. So when you're working in this state, you don't see anything. It just simply, you know, all you see is a orange mug. Um, so in order to actually see what's going on, we need to go into the photo view option. Now, if you don't see it in the menu here, we need to actually turn it on. Let's look for photo view. Here we go. Sorry, it's already it's in render tools, um, and we can have an integrated preview. So if we turn this on, it's asking me to change to perspective view. Uh, the problem of doing this, the following this approach, is that it takes a lot of memory on the computer. So it may cause your computer to crash if you don't have enough memory, or it just make make 
and cause other problems down the line. Uh, let's open up the preview window so we can see it. Now this takes a little while to load, so bear with me. So that's a preview window and it's it's rendering this in kind of it, it almost real time so it's doing passes as it goes along uh, but the problem is that it takes a lot of memory so here's where you know things get really begin to slow down so having a the the, the this is the integrated preview in at, at play and there it is there's a rendering and we can start to see how every pass as it goes along it begins to to edit the, the cup and that's what we get that's what it looks like so that's not the best way to do renderings well it's just a good way to kind of get an idea of what it looks like but it just takes a lot of uh, CPU power I mean it may cause things to really get bogged down so let's turn it off uh, another way of doing it is that this render region is another good way of thinking about it because instead of rendering the entire thing maybe we just render a little corner and then we can see what's going on without actually um, having to to use all the computing power so let's try it with there we go it's going to open up the the render button let me I'll drag it in a sec. There we go. So that's what it looks like. So this is doing a rendering and it's kind of like a it's a little separate program that it does on its own. Now you can see it over here. Switch it over. And you can see how it only renders the little tiny corner that we did. Uh, which is what we want. We just want to see if it's good enough or if we need to do something else. So again, this is taking a lot of computing power. So Rendering is a sort of thing that you want to do only at the end, once you have your model finished. Um, let's switch this off. Uh, we're going to go back to adding the materials. Uh, uh, another thing that we can do also is that uh, the, the, the thing that you need to remember is the mapping. Mapping is how things are organized in a, in a uh, how, how it applies the texture maps. Um, so in this case, for the mug, it actually just uses the entire thing. But let's say that if we selected the surface, so let's try doing something else here. Let's say that we wanted to color the inside of the, the interior of this a different color. So if we select here, I'm going to select that area. Actually, let me get out of here. Can do it like that. So I select this. And then I go into the material properties and I'm going to apply the material to the face. So now I'm actually just selecting that face and I can choose something else. So let's say that we go with, again, with plastic. And instead of being a, uh, we're going to go a low gloss material. And then we're going to apply it to that. So you see, it kept the materials for the other stuff but it applied this black surface to only that surface uh, and then if we go into mapping we can see the mapping of how this is being selected as the area that it's applying the, 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 the map um, Another thing you can look at too is this tab called Illumination. Now, I don't tend to play a lot with this. This just changes the illumination of the object uh, uh, depending on what kind of lights you have. But for this exercise, um, you don't need to worry too much about the lighting. This is more of a scene. Um, and, it, and, it, and again, it only shows more if you render the object. So it's hard to see unless you have the, the integrated preview on. You won't see many changes but uh, we'll worry about the lighting in a second let me just uh, let's just continue with adding materials to this so actually sorry uh, the next thing which is to add labels so if you want to add a label we go back to the library 
And here, we can actually do it two ways. You can actually find it here, where you say Edit Decal. You can click here, and the decal menu appears, which is essentially this one. And there's two ways of doing it. You can browse for an image, or the way that I like to do it is I just grab one of these images, drag it in here, There we go. So that way it just maps it and I can kind of see how it's looking. And then using the controls, I can change, and these are the mapping controls. So for instance, I can change the location of it. I can rotate it. I can scale it. Let me scale it over here. Oops. So you can scale it. Uh, if you don't want to have a um, proportional scaling, you have to turn off the fixed aspect ratio. So I just do it. Uh, I just have to make sure that I select this precisely. Uh, I can also do it from down here. So by using these controls, you can actually change the scaling. Uh, uh, here's the other control, the height, the width. It's a little hard, if, like uh, you can also use the handlebars, but, but you have to make sure that your mouse is on top of them. Otherwise you won't be able to do it. Like I keep grabbing the rotate control, which I don't want. Um, but if I get close enough, I can grab what I do want. Now you notice that the mug is sort of a, there's a little bit of an image left over here. And that has to do again with the mapping. So the ma mapping controls how maps, how, uh, how image maps, essentially labels or, or stickers look in here. So we're going to change the mapping from being cylindrical to a label. And when you choose the label option, it, it treats the thing, it treats the object more as, as something that just wraps around like, like a real label would. And then there's nothing in the background to worry about. It just simply, it's located there. I can use these other controls to, you know, again, stretch it or I can also change the location of the map, so I can wrap it around, and it behaves like in a real-world scenario, almost like a, you know, like a real label would, if I was adding a label. Oh, I think I lost it here. Just gonna type in zero. There it is. So now we can see that if we look at the. Um, material listings, I have a, a logo and the material. So let's get rid of the material, or actually let's just change the appearance of it. So if I go here, instead of red, I'm going to make it so I can see it better. I'm going to make it a light blue. There we go. And now I'm going to also change the label. So in order for me to change the label, I'm going to go back again. If I select the object here, I can see the order of operation of where the materials are. So I'm going to pick this guy. And then instead of using the one that's that's provided for me, I'm going to browse for the right material that I want. So in here, I'm going to go search in my folders. Uh, let me just get close and then I'll, I'll show you. So um, I'm going to look in my... So here I have, you know, folders full of labels, and I can pick the label that I want. So let's pick this guy, uh, the JPEG. And then it changes that. Now you notice how the JPEG has this white area around it. So I have a choice that I can actually do a little bit of selection uh, in here. Uh, when I, If I do the image mask, and the way this works is that I actually can pick, sorry, the selective color mask is the one that I'm looking for. And here I can pick the areas to kind of uh, get rid of. So I'm going to pick the white. 
and you see can it begins to delete any of the white areas now it has a little bit of a problem it's not a perfect tool uh, because it has difficulty figuring out the boundaries so it's a lot easier to have an image that uh, you remove the background like in the program like Photoshop and you leave it transparent and then you apply and then you 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 just load the file you can also try using the the, the alpha channel which is the transparency channel but you see if they in, in the case of a JPEG there's no transparency channel it just shows the same so let's switch over the file to to something that does have a transparency channel so here's a, here's another decal now you notice that this one's a JPEG this one's a PNG so PNGs, the nice thing about PNGs, and maybe what I'll do is I'll open up this Photoshop folder. Um, the nice thing about PNGs is that they do keep the transparency. So when I select that, it already has that transparency set in. So that you don't have to worry about deleting the background. It's already, you. it's been done in the, in the, the file. Um, I'll show you what that looks like in, in, in if you use a piece of software like Photoshop. So, you would see something like, oops, you see something like this. So, in the layers, you can see how uh, this one has the, the transparent background. It's really easy to kind of get an image from going from a... Um, solid background for transparent background maybe I'll just give you a quick preview of that actually let me try this again with we'll just try doing this and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say open this file and it'll open it in Photoshop now to get rid of the transparent to make this a uh, transparent background uh, you can use the any tool you want but like the lasso tool helps me select multiple areas and then I say select inverse so now the, the, the only the logo gets selected I go cut control X and paste and then this background here if I get rid of it I get a transparent background and to save it I just go uh, save for web and this option will allow me to save it as either a PNG or a GIF. It doesn't matter. A GIF or PNG work almost the same. Um, there's, there's other things but what's important is that it has this transparency option. And if I go save uh, it, it just allows me to save that file in there. So you see here now we have a PNG Let's close uh, Photoshop. So now if I try to add the image as a PNG, uh, there, it uses that color mask. Now it, it, it also got rid of some of the interior of that, but that's okay. Uh, I'll just need to go back to my file and save that. There's a there's something that, that it got rid of not just the, the white but also the other stuff around it so again it's, it's a lot easier to fix this in Photoshop than to try to do it in, in, in SolidWorks. SolidWorks doesn't have really the tools that you want but uh, let's go back to the other image uh, the one that has the Starbucks coffee so we're gonna use the alpha channel Let's shrink it. Uh, let's get a good view from the front. Uh, another thing that you also may want to play around with is that the mapping, depending on the mapping that you use, you get different effects. So, for example, if you try to do the mapping, uh, depending on the object that you have, if I use some of the other options, so for example, projection, what the projection does is that it, it gives me this kind of uh, image that, imagine having a projector in front of it and shining a light and it goes all the way across so the image in the front is is the right one but the image in the back is reversed so there's certain situations where you want to use the projection mostly like if you have a flat plane um, the other type of mapping spherical 
that's if you have a very amorphous shape. And you can see kind of like there's a sphere inside of it. So we can change the size of the sphere to try to make it fit. But because this is not a sphere object, it doesn't really make much sense to try a sphere. It doesn't, the mapping doesn't quite work. And you see how it tries to apply it, but it doesn't know where to, how to put it. A sphere would be good if you had, let's say, something like a blob and you wanted to map it. It's not a sphere, it's not a cube well, then the sphere, sphere will probably wrap itself around it. The last one is a cylindrical one. And this may actually come out useful because this is a bit of a cylindrical shape and it behaves a little bit differently than the label because if I shrink it, let me get close enough here. If I shrink this, it actually kind of wraps around itself around the cylinder. So here it's, it's, it's just the right shape, but if I keep going, it's gonna do some weird things. It's kind of like it's stretching itself around and then it has this effect of the back. So, you know, there's no right or wrong way of applying any of these mapping tools. Just pick the one that, that seems to work and then uh, you should get the effect that you want. Here you get this weird effect in the back and that has to do with the way that the mapping cylinder uh, works. So maybe the label, the label is probably the, the easiest and the best tool if you just want to apply literally labels to the object. Okay. Now, one last thing about the, uh, uh, the objects is that if we go into the scene, uh, you notice that uh, we, we are in perspective view. So let's change that back to orthographic. Um, I believe if you go here, you can actually just switch over from perspective to orthographic. Orthographic just means that the lines, the intersection lines are straight. Um, but let's say that we do want to have a special perspective. So in the scene, um, we can actually add a scene if we wanted to, um, but before we do that, let's just look, look at cameras. Uh, so cameras are basically different, different ways of setting up a view. So if you go over here and we say add camera, we can see how this menu comes along. And then this menu allows us to kind of like change our view to fit the camera. But this one over here allows us to actually literally move the camera. So there's two ways of doing it. You can just drag it around like this, or you can drag the focus point and move it around. Okay. So if I do it this way, that's, that's that center point stays static, and I just rotate uh, the way that I want to. It's a little hard to control, uh, so you may, may want to just switch over to a, you know, to one flat view and then just do it one at a time. Here we can use the, the mouse controls to zoom in and out. And and it gives us a very uh, controlled view of our mug. Now, what's really neat about the camera is that we can change the lens that we use and we can change the perspective. So for example, if we use a 24 millimeter lens, uh, that's a fisheye lens. So everything, all the lines converge really sharply but if we use a telephoto lens, then everything is really close up and, and the lines, the, the, the perspective lines are very straight. They're almost parallel. So that's a big difference of how, you know, perspective is not a thing about getting closer or further away from an object. It's more of a tool to change the perspective of an object. So this might help you when you're trying to create a scene uh, to match the perspective of the scene or to, or, or to just change the way that this looks when you render it. Uh, the other thing you can play around with too is the lights. So we can actually add, uh, we can edit the directional light. Let's see what happens. So there's the light and we can change how it looks. And we change the, you see how it changes the illumination of the part. So we can play around with those things. Um, this, there's very few controls. I, I believe you can add the light. You can add things like a spotlight, and then you can edit it. So here's a spotlight. I don't recommend playing too much with the lights. It's it's a very rudimentary thing. Uh, so, but you can you can try it out. Uh, change the spotlight. You know the the key about the spotlight is the 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 fall off. So the control for the fall off is let's see. I believe it's one of these, one of these dials controls it. Maybe we can do it interactively. Yeah, there we go. 
So we can change the, the fall off, and then you see how it creates a bit of a shadow. Um, like that. The intensity is what I'm really interested in. I believe. Here we go. Yeah, none of these control intensity, so let's try maybe over here. Uh, we can show all the lights, or we can hide all the lights. Yeah, so, so that's what I mean. Like, it, there's not much you can do in terms of the lighting. Uh, I think maybe, let's try here. brightness so we can change the brightness there we go that's intensity and the specularity has to do with how much of a how sharp the the light is ambient is kind of like all the way around so so that's kind of like how you control the lighting controls um, and so again it, we don't see too much of the effects here but if we switch over to oh we, we get a few more options here that, that just appeared I haven't played too much around with this. You may want to have a look at this. Uh, the options let you change how the what the rendering parameters would be. Um, so, for example, right now we're rendering the entire sheet, but if you want to have a quicker rendering, you can change the resolution. Uh, and there's also like, a, for example, things like output ambient. The, 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 the TIFF is usually the best for the best uh, output, uh, and I'll explain why, because TIFF actually keeps an alpha channel, meaning that any transparency you can actually take out later on, but, the, you know, there's many options, there's, there's, there's a lot of options here, I usually don't play too many with this, I mean, I, I try to, you can try seeing what kind of results you get, um, you can start small, like rendering something small, and then once you like it, once you have something that you like, you can try changing the settings to render something really big. Let's just have a look. So if we open up the preview window, it's taking a second here. There we go. And so it's going to start to render based on the settings that we have. I change the resolution, I change the lighting, so that should be taken into account. And there we go. So it begins to render that. And you see by, by changing the uh, uh, the size and the, 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 the quality and the resolution, I get a much, either a clear result or, a, or not. And then once I'm ready to, once I'm, I'm happy with that I have, I just save the image. And again, make sure to save it as a TIFF, um, not as JPEG and not, a, not anything else. Like uh, TIFF is usually the, the most, uh, it gives you the best uh, options when you go and, and you try to do things like get rid of the background or, or keep the shadows or things like that. Okay. Um, we didn't cover too much about the background. Uh, we, we there, SolidWorks has some backgrounds in, like you can actually... You know, it has some studio scenes here that it, it, it keeps. Uh, backgrounds are just sort of things that make reflections really stand out. So I can do something like this or 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 add the light cards. It's just some, uh, there I say, cheesy sort of uh, background effects. I think it's a lot better if you just uh, do a Photoshop background, like you take a photo of whatever you want or take one from, you know, download one and just make the part fit in there. So, um, if we do the rendering again, we can see how that would look. So, 
the, the, nothing much has changed. I mean, there's a couple of things that, for example, you see the reflection now. This looks like a, it's on a light table, so there's a bit of a reflection. The background is still sort of like this shady, kind of misty blue. Um, so, you know, it's just a, let's try trying, seeing if we find something else. Here's one interesting one. So let's try this. This is our like built-in backgrounds. Um, try this. Uh, here's a streetscape. Right? So you can actually load your own background and then by changing the perspective of this. Um, so if you have a camera view. Let's switch over to camera. Depending on how we make it, we can make it, make our cup sort of fit the perspective. We need to change the way that the perspective looks. So we're gonna switch the lens. We're gonna make it more like that. And then we zoom in. And that, believe it or not, that seems to be the right perspective almost. Um, maybe not. But you can still play around with the, the camera to get the right perspective. Uh, use a background image to, to get the idea of how it should be rendered. And, and once you have, you know, a good position of the object, you can go back to the... Uh, the here and just say don't keep the background none so that you know it, it, this gives you the most options because then you render the object with a blank background and in Photoshop you can just tweak it and, and make it fit um, anyway so, so that's it for now